Hey guys, this is Hunter with Dialect for Hero Clicks, and we're back again with another entry in our rules explanation series. Today we're talking about the piece that probably has been the biggest rules cluster fluster cluck to come out since I started playing the game of Hero Clicks, and that's the Silver Centurion. He is number 001B, the prime from and the common prime from Invincible Iron Man. And he creates a torpedo that has tons of rules questions and you guys have been requesting this a whole lot but I've been holding it until the new players guide entry came out and until the rules deputies had more time to work on and refine exactly what they wanted to happen with this piece so now that all that has happened hopefully at this point everything is done and will not change I'll go ahead and do the video first let's read his trait pulse bolt torpedo once per game, give Silver Centurion a power action to put a Torpedo Special Terrain Marker on the map in an adjacent square. When the Torpedo is on the map, you may give Silver Centurion a free action, put Excel tokens on the card, and then move the Torpedo equal to the number of tokens, as if it were a character with Wing Symbol, Improve Movement, Ignore Characters. At the beginning or end of your turn, if the marker's squared is occupied by an opposing character, you must remove the marker from the map and make a close combat attack roll against that character with an attack of 11 damage value equal to the number of excel tokens maximum 7 so how it works is well first of all what I just read is what is printed on the card but some small changes have been made to it since this piece launched and we will talk about those and go through different situations with Silver Centurion Alright, so with this complicated piece, let's first start out simple and go through kind of the order of steps that would happen whenever you put out your torpedo. So once per game, you can give Centurion a power action. So we'll give him a power action here to put a pulse bolt torpedo. Now you can use whatever token you want to use for this. We're going to use the little, my little Iron Man poker chips I made. Put that on the map. And this is a terrain marker. Now... The benefits and the, the differences between this being a terrain marker and it being a bystander token, similar to how Phantom X puts out a bystander Eva or how Alyosha Craven puts out a bystander Lion, is that terrain is not a character so it can't be attacked. So there's no way for your opponent to destroy this um, token and take it away from you because it's not a character. They can't target it. Um, they also can occupy, terrain can be occupied by other characters, whereas bystanders cannot because they are a character, they take up the space, terrain you can go on top of. Um, you cannot blow up this terrain because you can only blow up walls or block, squares of blocking terrain. This is not a square blocking terrain, it's just special terrain. So those are the benefits of, and the differences of it being terrain versus being a character. Um... As far as the second part of his trait, when the torpedo is on the map, you may give Silver Centurion a free action, put an acceleration token on this card. Now in the example, instead of doing the card, I'm going to do it on him since we're visually going to be doing this so that you guys can see it at all times. So we put one token, one marker there on his card. And... Uh, Put an acceleration token on this card and then move the torpedo equal to the number of acceleration tokens as if it were a character with wing symbol, improved movement, ignores characters. So we put it on and he can move, how many tokens does he have? One. So he can move one square. He ignores characters and he has the wing symbol. All right. At the beginning or end of your turn, if the marker square is occupied by an opposing character, you must remove it. Now, we'll get to that part later. So I just wanted to show you how the acceleration works. So next turn, you can give him a free action at any point in your turn. Turn that to two, move two spaces. Next turn, you can pop, pump it to three, move it three spaces. Move it around the map. Now, even though when you go to make the attack, the damage maxes out at seven... You can keep ticking this as far as you want to tick it every turn. It'll keep going up. And that will help your movement. But when you go to make the attack, you won't have a 12 attack, but you'll have a 12 movement 
and then a maximum seven on the damage. Your damage is the only thing that's locked out. Next, let's talk about where the attack is coming from. So let's take a situation here. Let's say we got our token, let's say up to five. And by this point, we're facing off against a wrecking crew and they have started to make their way around the map and are gonna give Silver Centurion some trouble. So what we can do, they move in, the Wrecking Crew does that is, and then uh, they switch in over to us, and it's now our turn, it's now Silver Centurion's turn. So at the beginning of the turn, he can take a free action, or actually he can do this at any point in, the, in his turn. He can take a free action, tick the counters up, and then move this six squares. So if we wanted to hopefully eventually hit Bulldozer with it, we'll move it under Bulldozer Square. So now it occupies the same square Bulldozer does, and it's got six. Now, at this point, it doesn't attack bulldozer yet it will not attack bulldozer until the end of the turn because of the sentence in the trait where it says at the beginning or end of your turn if the marker's square is occupied by an opposing character you must remove the marker from the map make a close combat attack roll that equals the 11 attack damage equal to the number of tokens so we can do whatever else we want at this point we can have silver centurion running shot and shoot Absorbing Man. We can move a couple of our other pieces and then when we're done with our turn and it goes to the end step, now the attack happens. Now some an opposing character is on the terrain. We have to make a close combat attack. The attack value is an 11 and the damage value is equal to the number of Excel tokens. So in this case, a six. If we had got this up to a say a 10 already, the damage is still going to max out at a 7 because of the trait says maximum 7. So the most you can go is 7, or if your dice, if your markers are anything less than 7, then you use whatever your marker says. Now, there's no way to pump up the attack or damage of this marker. And that's because it is a it is not a character. It is, it is terrain. The terrain, the pulse bolt, this is what is making the attack. Silver Centurion is not making the attack. So we can't put an Enhancer or an Empowerer next to Silver Centurion to give it extra damage. We can't perplex him or this to give it damage because this is the guy that's making an attack. You can't perplex this guy, the, the Pulse Bolt, because it is not a character, it is terrain. You cannot prop control it, whether you're, it's yours or the opponent's, because it's not a character. Prop control is targeting a character. There is no character, there is only terrain. There is no Dana, there is only Zul in this situation. So when this attack goes off, nobody's gonna be able to re-roll it. So let's go through the steps here. Let's make an attack value of 11 and a damage value equal to the number of tokens, so six against Bulldozer as a 17. So that hits. He takes five, one, two, three, four, five. Now at this point, let's read through the trait here and see what happens. You would remove the tokens from the card at this point. They are gone. And that matters because there are certain situations where you can friendly mind control Silver Centurion to pop out another Pulse Bolt, or there's opposing where you can uh, mind control Centurion and make him um, pop out another one. We're not going to get into that on this rules video because it is extremely complicated and very kind of abstract. It's not going to happen all the time anyway. But just so you know, if it comes up in your home games, after you make that attack, you remove these tokens from the card. Um, and again, this is the terrain that is making this attack it is not silver centurion so if he has mystics nobody takes any mystics damage because the terrain was the one that was doing it and it's going to be removed anyways if 
The terrain crit missed. He's not taking a hit because he's not making the attack. The terrain is making an attack. So those are two answers to two questions that I get all the time. Do you take Mystics on Silver Centurion when he makes the attack? Do you crit miss and take damage? No. Silver Centurion is not the one making the attack. Another situation that comes up often with Silver Centurion and a question that you guys ask me a lot is, at the beginning of my turn, can I move the token before it would blow up? And the answer is yes, and, I, and we'll, we'll give an example visually, and I'll explain why it works like that. So let's say the Absorbing Man wants to get over here, get on the torpedo before it blows up, and basically make it blow up now while it's only at 4 instead of letting it get up to its maximum 7. So he's going to rush in, move on top of it during his turn. So we give him a token. And now he's on top of the Pulse Bolt Torpedo. And let's say that our other two guys moved around to attack Silver Centurion while all this is going down. Now, it, they end their turn. It becomes our turn with Silver Centurion on our team. And now this is where the question becomes a pretty good one. Because if you read Pulse Board to Torpedo, at the beginning or end of your turn... If the marker square is occupied by an opposing character, you must remove the marker from the map and make a close combat attack roll against that character, blah, 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 blah. So now when you read that, and when I initially read it when this figure first came out, since it said you must, then I thought you had to remove the token. But, and I can see why it got ended up ruled this way, don't forget that also each turn you can give this a free action to tick it, up move it that many squares and this is something uh, an important thing to think about at the beginning of your turn when you have all these free actions whether it's outwit perplex poison free movement like if you have iron man drones or free actions such as giving him a free action to tick this and then move it you can do all those steps in any order at the beginning of your turn as long as you haven't taken a non-free action this is the same thing that lets you outwit poison first or outwit defense powers and then make your poison kick in on your guy that's the same thing that lets you take the token give silver centurion its reaction turn it to six and then move it because remember it ignores characters on movement so then it could get away and absorbing man just wasted his time trying to make it blow up so yes it has been ruled by the rules arbiter and been verified by WizKids that the intent was that it could move at the beginning of your turn if your opponent moved on top of it because of the order of free actions. So basically there's no point, <laughs> hardly, in trying to rush the thing down and stand on it. Um, even though it says you must remove it from the map at the beginning of your turn, you can still take the free action to move it before you would have to trigger that. So I know this has been extremely confusing and people are going to ask me, well, what do I do against Silver Centurion? I can't make the thing blow up by moving on top of it during my turn so that it, you know, start of his turn it blows up. You can't hit the guy, the Silver Centurion, with poison, psychic blast, or pulse wave. I don't know what to do. I'll be quite honest, it's, there's not a good simple answer. He is really tough to deal with. He's an extremely good piece. And most of the rulings that have happened have been in his favor, besides the fact that you can't improve the values on the token. One kind of abstract, but I guess not super abstract, since this is a super popular piece. One thing you could do is with free action mind control, you can in fact make the token blow up on his own guys. Okay? It's going to require a few things, though. It's going to require a free action mind control, like what Brother Voodoo gets when he has one token. And it also requires one of your opponent's pieces to be standing on the pulse bolt. So let's say we have this; these two teamed up against Brother Voodoo. And it's Brother Voodoo's turn... And his team does all their things. And then he has one token. 
Well, remember, he gets to use mind control as a free action. So what you can do is go to your end of your turn where all you can take is free actions before you clear tokens and, end your, and pass your turn over. And he can free action mind control and hit Silver Centurion. So he'll, he uses mind control, he hits. Now Silver Centurion is friendly to Brother Voodoo and therefore the terrain marker is friendly to Brother Voodoo. So now we have these three guys on the same team with Absorbing Man being the only opposing character since he is ours at the moment. And then what that does is then when you look at Silver Centurion, his trait is going to, you'll be able to make his trait go off. Because it is it is the end of your turn and an opposing character is occupying the terrain marker. So then you could make the Pulse Bolt attack your opponent's own piece. Because at this moment, he is friendly to you, Pulse Bolt's friendly to you, this is opposing to you. So you can make it blow up like that. So with free action, you can't do it with regular mind control though, because it wouldn't be the end of your turn yet. If you're taking non-free actions, it's not the end of your turn. It's not the end step. During the end step, you can only take free action. All right, another thing I thought of that could really help out, um, really the only other easy way to get free action mind control besides playing Brother Voodoo is by using the Mento Intensifier Ring from the power plant. So let's say that uh, again, this is a team versus this team and we give him the Mento intense firing at, at the start of our turn and he charges around and he hits Silver Centurion and makes him take damage. Now, because of the Mento intense firing, since Silver Centurion took damage from us, we can use Mind Control as a free action to target a single character that took damage from our attack. So at the end of our turn, as a free action, we can target Silver Centurion with Mind Control. We got him. And now we can make the Pulse Bolt, bolt blow up and attack the Absorbing Man. So that's an, the only other easy way I could think of getting free action Mind Control was Brother Voodoo or the Mento Intensifier Ring. All right, and then lastly, the only other real option you could have to try to make the uh, Torpedo blow up on your opponent is if you had multiple mind controllers, if you had a free action mind controller and any other mind controller on your team, whether it's free action or not. We could have this character go ahead and use mind control on Absorbing Man, hit, make him move over onto the Pulse Bolt, and then at the end of our turn, if Brother Voodoo has an action token, he uses free action mind control and then makes it blow up. So if your opponent isn't stupid enough to move on top of their own Pulse Bolt, you can try to mind control their other pieces, move them on the pulse, pulse Bolt, and then free action mind control Silver Centurion to make it blow up. I know these are somewhat abstract situations, but I'm just trying to give you some kind of idea of how you can take this guy down. And I figure since Brother Voodoo is such a popular piece that you know there's at least a decent chance that this matchup may happen at your venue. So in summary, I know this has been confusing, I apologize. This has been a this is an extremely confusing piece to sit and break down in rules language and still try to make it sound simplistic enough for the average hero clicks player to easily understand it. This has been the most challenging of these videos for me to do, uh, but I wanted to do it because you guys requested it so much. Um, if you still have Silver Centurion questions that are kind of more specific. You can post them in the YouTube comments. You can search on the hcrealms.com um, rules section of the forum. Search through the forums. There should be threads already open for almost every situation at this point. But um, as a summary, the main points of this piece, um, each turn you can give Silver Centurion a free action to put a counter on the token and move it that many squares. That's every turn as a free action. Um, you can get as many counters as you want going on this guy to buff your movement. But when you go to make the attack, you're going to be locked at a maximum damage of 7. And you're always going to have an attack value of 11. So all that the extra tokens will help is movement. But you can, in fact, get as many tokens as you want on that card. Acceleration tokens. 
Um, you cannot improve the values of the pulse bolt torpedo. You can't perplex it, enhance, or empower it because it is not a character. You cannot prob control it during the attack, offensively or defensively, because it is not a character. You have no target character to target with your prob control. Um, the attack is coming from the terrain marker, from the pulse bolt, bolt torpedo, not from Silver Centurion. So any game effects that re that that comes up in, just remember it's this making the attack, not Silver Centurion. So Mystics, Crit Miss, anything that happens when this makes the attack will not affect Silver Centurion. After the attack is made, remove all tokens from the battlefield and that includes these tokens that were on Silver Centurion's card. You remove those from the game. Ways to combat it, there aren't a whole lot. Basically free action mind control is the only real way to do any very nice tricks with or against him. Other than that, Silver Centurion naturally is weak to charge exploit or um, charge exploit battle fury or outwit. He's in cap um, those are about the only ways that are reliable to combat against him. So I hope this has helped you guys. I know it's confusing. I apologize if this has been confusing. But if you have any further questions, just feel free to ask me in the comments section on this YouTube video. Be sure to like and uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. I try to put out new videos every week. We have unboxings. We have starter set reviews. We have these rules explanation series and we have match videos once a month too for you guys so i try to get out uh hero clicks content once a week so be sure to subscribe to our youtube channel and catch our podcast dial h your hero clicks every week at itunes youtube and podbean.com